the Dr. Dre contract. That's something I never thought I would be saying in a GTA Online video, but it was just added into the game, and honestly, it's a lot of fun. Just like we do every single time a new activity comes to GTA Online, I'm gonna walk you through it, give you some tips along the way, so that you can finish the contract faster, which means you can make more money per hour. The contract is gonna give you $1 million, plus about 95,000 for all of the setup, so about $1.1 million. And with all of the tips in this video, you should be able to complete this within, I would say, about one and a half to two hours. So that comes out to about $600,000 an hour on average. If you enjoy this video, a thumbs up would be awesome. Subscribe for more stuff like this. And just before we jump in again, there's just over one and a half weeks left to pre-order that 1 million subscriber heist hoodie. If you do want to pick one up, link is in the pinned comment and the description below. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you do, tag me on Twitter and uh, I'll like your tweet as a way of saying thanks. All right, let's jump in. So the first thing a lot of people probably still don't know is how to actually start Start the Dr. Dre contract. To do that, you're gonna need an agency. These start at just over $2 million in Little Soul, and they can get to over $2.8 million for the most expensive one. I made a complete guide on what you should and shouldn't buy on the agency, so feel free to check that out as well. But once you've bought your agency, of course, head over there. You're gonna get put into a cutscene with Franklin, and Franklin's sort of gonna get you started on what to do with an agency. In order to actually start the Dr. Dre contract, though, there's a few things you're gonna have to do. First of all, you're gonna have to do a security contract from the computer in your agency. That mission will be pretty straightforward, but once you've actually finished that, the next step is to go over to C. Franklin, and that'll be on your map over here at the golf course. Once you finish that mission, you're gonna have to wait until Franklin is gonna call you. What I like to do in the meantime is just do another security contract. That's what I'd recommend for you. And then within a few minutes, Franklin should give you a call saying you can come back. For the first time through, this is actually gonna happen between pretty much every mission, which is kind of annoying. But after you complete the entire contract the first time, you can start them up instantly. For your first time through, you're gonna have to do an additional setup as well. And this one's called Data Recovery. With this one, there's not many tips I can actually give you. While this mission is actually really cool and pretty fun, it kind of is just sit in one spot and hold off enemies. So I guess just sit in one spot and uh, hold off enemies. Try not to die. <laughs> Once you finish the setups there, you're ready for the actual contract itself. The way the contract works is it's kind of like a heist. But I would say it's more like the Doomsday Heist as opposed to the Casino or Kayaburiko Heist where there's only really one way to do it. The contract isn't really going to give you as much freedom as the recent heists have in terms of approaching it from a lot of different ways. Anyway, there's still a lot of tips I can give you that can save you a lot of time. The setups in the contract are split into three different sections. Nightlife Leak, High Society Leak, and South Central Leak. All of these will lead you to track down a different leak of Dr. Dre's music. And then finally, you'll be put into two extra missions to complete the contract. So which one should you do first? Honestly, it doesn't matter. I like to just do them in order. So we'll start off with the nightlife leak. The first setup in this branch is the nightclub. Now, for any of you guys that actually have a nightclub and know the layout pretty well, this will probably help you a little bit in this mission. But basically, all you have to do is go to the nightclub, get the drive and get out. Now, there is optional stealth in this mission, but the stealth is kind of bugged, but I finally figured out a way to get through pretty much all of this mission without breaking stealth. I'll let the clip play in the background so you can just follow the order that I did in terms of taking the enemies out. But you might be thinking, why are you taking all of these guys out? You can just slip past some of them. Well, the reason I take all of them out, and you should too, is if you do happen to break stealth later in the mission, these guys are gonna chase you down and fight you. So it just makes sense to take care of them now, take the extra two seconds to save yourself a life later in the mission. Once you get to this stage, you might be tempted to take out these two guys here, but what I found was this automatically breaks stealth. What you wanna do is you wanna take the guy out on top first, and then the rest of the guys. So what you just saw was the wrong way to do it. I'll play the right way to do it now. Then you just go upstairs, take the two guys out in the office, and for some reason, almost every single time, this is where it automatically broke stealth. But still, this should give you enough freedom to get out without dying. 
Once you take the tape back to the agency, that's it, and we're on to the next setup. The next setup is the marina, and this one is kind of interesting. I got bamboozled on the first time, so I'm going to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. Once you get down to the marina, it's going to want you to steal the green boat. And I was under the impression that you had to take this boat out to the yacht, but that's actually not the case. All you need to do is just jump in the boat, hop in the driver's seat, and that's going to add the location of the super yacht to your map. After that point, you can just get out, get back on your oppressor or whatever vehicle you were in and fly out to the boat. That's going to save you a few minutes. And uh, if you do this a lot, that's going to save you a lot of time. Once you get out to the super yacht, it does have air defenses, but for some reason, they're not very good. It's going to give you enough time to actually land whatever aircraft you're in on the boat, but you're not going to have too much time, so get out as soon as you can. From this point on, you're going to get in a lot of gunfights, so I hope you're stocked up on body armor and snacks for this encounter. The game's going to tell you to go in through the main door, which is going to be locked, so you're going to have to go up to the bridge, take out one of these guys in there, and then open the main door. The button to open the main door is on the left, but there's actually another button on the right that's going to disable the air defenses, which is really important if you want to take the aircraft off the boat that you came on with. So definitely take the few seconds to disable the air defenses as well. Once you've done that, head down into the main cabin and you're going to have to find the evidence. Now, there's actually three different spots that this evidence can spawn. The first one is up near the bar here, just to the left as you walk in. And the other two are on the slightly lower level. So you're going to have to go down this hallway and there's a bunch of bedrooms on your right. One of them can spawn in the very furthest bedroom in the back right here. And the last one can spawn in a room slightly closer to the front, but back here. Once you've got that, you just need to take it back to the agency, just like every other mission. So head outside and there's going to be two buzzards that are going to try and gun you down. My advice to you is that, well, you can take them out if you want, but what I like to do is just jump back on my aircraft that I came with and uh, spam the eat snacks button because these guys are going to hurt. But you do have free snacks available right as you walk in your agency, so you can just fill them up whenever you want. So I'm happy to just burn as many snacks as I possibly can here to get back alive. Once those two setups are done, you're on to the finale for the first part for the nightlife leak. And to be honest, there's really not too much advice I can give you for this one. It's all pretty straightforward. There's no option to do this one stealthily, so you need to go guns blazing. My only advice I can really give you here is take use of cover, make sure you're stocked up on body armor and snacks, and uh, good luck. Let's go through the High Society League next. For the first setup, you're going to have to go to the Pacific Bluffs Country Club, and uh, there is an option to go in stealthily if you avoid the cameras, but the stealth is going to be broken as soon as you kill one of the enemies in here anyway, so uh, I don't really bother. It should be pretty easy to take all of the guys out here anyway, but the quickest way to do it is just throw a sticky bomb. Everything's going to explode. They're all going to die. You're not going to take any damage, so that's the best way to do it, but you can shoot them if you want. Then you're going to have to go track down a limo, and this shouldn't be too hard to find, but in this one specific location, it took me a long time to find the limo, so I'm just going to show you where it is. It gives you this big circle, but the limo itself is actually in the underground car park area over here, so don't be fooled. Don't drive around like an idiot for 10 minutes like I did trying to find it. It'll be down here. If your limo spawned in a different part of the map, it should be really easy to find. This was honestly the only difficult one. Now, the game is going to uh, trick you into thinking that you have to follow this limo to where it's going. But uh, don't believe that. That's a massive waste of time. Just blow up the limo, walk up to the driver's side door, and steal the item. This is one of my favorite parts of the entire contract because you get to become the burning man, but you shouldn't be on fire long enough for it to kill you, so don't worry. Take the wallet back to the agency and you're on to the next setup. For the next setup, we need to stun the lawyer and take him and his vehicle back to the agency. I've done this setup a bunch of times and in my opinion, it's just a massive waste of time to try and do it in stealth. Just go in guns blazing, even with like an oppressor mark two if you want, just make sure, be very, very careful that you don't kill the lawyer. Normally what I do is I take a few guys out with an oppressor mark two, land on the roof and then slowly make my way down. Again, in your gunfights here, snacks and armor are your friends. I would also recommend a weapon like a combat MG mark two. It's really powerful. It's got a hundred bullets in the mag. If you're being somewhat cautious, using your armor and your snacks, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Stun the lawyer and then take the vehicle back to the agency. Just like the buzzards in the nightlife leak part of the setups, 
These guys in vehicles that are trying to kill you actually can do a fair bit of damage. So I would have your snacks menu open and I would be spamming snacks as you're trying to get out so you don't die. Then we're on to the mission for the High Society leak. And uh, this is probably the longest out of all of the missions. And there's a few time savers that I can give you to uh, help you, well, save time. Once you're inside, you're going to have to go up to the DJ. The mission isn't going to move forward until you do that. And after that, you basically just have to trash the party and kill a bunch of people. But we've got so many nice cars around here, it would be a shame to blow them all up. So I wouldn't actually blow all of them up. I'd leave one or two around so that you can actually drive that vehicle in the second part of the mission. While you're in this massive gunfight, there's two spots I like to take cover. First one is just up here sort of in this area and the other one i like to use is actually getting on the roof like you can just jump up on top of the roof like this and use this as cover this is pretty good as well once you're up here use a combat mg mark ii or another powerful weapon use your rpgs your grenade launchers sticky bombs whatever you need to blow up pretty much all of the vehicles like i said just leave one or two when the intimidation bar gets to about 50 percent full a buzzard is going to come in that thing can absolutely destroy you so try and take that out as soon as you can with a homing launcher or any sniper powerful gun anything once you're finished with that a cutscene is gonna play the billionaire is gonna get in a helicopter and try and run away now there's a few things you can do to try and destroy this what's interesting is your homing rockets aren't actually gonna lock onto this one so your options then are things like a minigun a heavy sniper mark ii you can use just normal guns but these are gonna take a lot longer and it's pretty unlikely that you're actually gonna be able to quickly destroy this helicopter before he gets out of range so what I actually like to do, and I think the fastest strategy is, is to steal one of the vehicles from the party, which is why we didn't blow all of them up, because the Ignis, which is the name of this car, is really fast. Take it a few hundred meters ahead of the helicopter, hop out, get your minigun, and then spray it down. This is by far the most consistent method that I've tried here. After that, no matter what, the helicopter is going to crash in the exact same spot. If for some reason you weren't able to destroy the helicopter though, it's going to go off to a yacht that's just a bit further out in the ocean. If that happens, don't worry, you can do it. Still pretty easy. It's just going to take a bit longer. So take out the billionaire, get his phone, and then get back to the agency. One of the things I found though is on the way back to the agency, these AI that are following you are actually pretty strong and they've kind of got pretty strong aimbot as well so if you didn't want to drive all the way back to the agency and try and deal with those guys on the way what you can actually do since i mean we're right here is you may as well take the really fast supercar you stole and jump the fence into fort zancudo and steal a jet it's up to you but what i found is this is actually faster because when i try and take a car back the ai often shoot out one of the tires and then it's sort of all downhill from there so stealing a jet is a lot easier now we're on to the South Central League. For the first setup here, there's really not many tips I can give you. The sort of obvious one is try not to blow up the van that you need to steal. But after that, really just try and get away from the gang chasing you and try and hide from the cops as well. It shouldn't be too hard to escape the cops on this one. I don't think you're going to need to go to like the sewers or any of the best hiding spots. Honestly, if you just hide in a back alley, you should be able to lose them. And honestly, that's pretty much it for this setup. Moving on to the second one though, the best tip I can give you here is without a doubt 100% use an armored vehicle. I've tried going in on foot, I've tried using a Torador and a Presser Mark II, but really the one I've had the most luck with is the armored Karuma or other vehicles like a Night Shark will do here as well. This gunfight between the gangs is actually just time-based. You don't need to kill as many as you think, so you're not going to need to bring a Depressor Mark II or anything with a bunch of rockets. You just need to stay alive. The easiest way to do that is with something like a Night Shark or an armored Karuma. That's about it. Eventually, the cops are going to come. You're going to have to follow Vernon to a garage. You can even follow him in your armored vehicle so you don't need to run around on foot and risk dying. Go in the garage with Vernon, and then that's pretty much it. Now, on the final mission for this one, this one's actually a really important tip. Again, you're going to want to use something like the Armored Karuma or the Night Shark. But one of the problems I was running into is you can't actually request a new personal vehicle in these missions. So, for example, if I had my Oppressor Mark II set as my personal vehicle, I wouldn't be able to call in any other vehicle. And because the Oppressor Mark II isn't available in missions, I wouldn't be able to use it at all. So, before you jump into this mission, 
make sure your personal vehicle is set as the vehicle you want to use. If you've got your Night Shark or Armored Karuma, this mission is honestly a complete breeze. You never actually have to hop out of your vehicle. Take out all the enemies from the safety of your vehicle. Chase down the Vargos guy who's trying to get away. Steal his lowrider and take it back to the agency. Pretty straightforward. After you've completed all of the leaks, there's two more missions you're going to need to complete. The first one is called Studio Time, and you don't actually start this one up from your computer. You're going to start this one up by going outside Franklin's office. And just like we did for all of the third leak, I recommend armored vehicles here. Once you start up the mission, you are going to have to drive Dre's car to the studio, but that's kind of a lie. You actually just need to drive it to this point here where you get this checkpoint. Then you can just go into your interaction menu, request your personal vehicle to be delivered there, and then use that. Again, I've tried a bunch of vehicles here. You are going to want something armored, ideally, but still things like a Torador that you can still get shot out of, but have missiles are still pretty decent. But I just like using something a bit more armored just so I don't get shot out of it. Anyway, kill all of the enemies here and then go inside Studio A Records. Then again, it's kind of straightforward. Just try and stay alive, use your cover, use your armor, use your snacks, and uh, good luck. Once you take out all of the enemies in here, you're going to have to go watch Dr. Dre perform, which is really cool the first time through. Unfortunately, you can't actually skip these cutscenes, at least right now. Hopefully Rockstar implements that in the future, because uh, I really enjoyed seeing Dre the first few times, but, you know, the 10th, 12th, 13th, it kind of gets a bit boring. But anyway... After you finish that mission, head back to the agency and you're on to the finale. Johnny Guns is going to be hiding in this section right here. And actually, once you get in here, it's automatically going to kick you out of your vehicle. But the game actually does put you in a really good location that you can just peek fire out of. So honestly, I wouldn't even recommend trying to get out of this location. This is pretty good. Just take out all the enemies. Again, use your armor, your snacks, your explosives, whatever you need to do. If you're looking to save a lot of time on this mission, I recommend your personal vehicle should be something like the Torador that has boosters that can help you get around the map faster. But honestly, that's up to you. After that, you're going to have to go down to Los Santos International Airport into the Devon Western Hangar. And again, there's not much I can tell you here. You're just going to go exactly the way the game tells you and try not to die. So body armor, snacks, explosives are all going to help you out. Once you get to the point where you need to take out Johnny Guns, I would recommend getting full health and popping a body armor before you do it because he can destroy you pretty quick. But what I always do to make sure I don't die is I actually just shoot him with a stun gun first so that he can't shoot me anymore. Then just put a couple shots into him with any other gun and that's pretty much it. After that, you're done. You just need to drive Dr. Dre to his helicopter and you've got your $1 million. So I hope that helped you out. There's not as many tips I can give you for this as opposed to something like the Kaya Perico or Casino Heist. Because a lot of this is pretty straightforward, but I still hope a lot of these tips did help you save a few minutes on every setup. If they did, a thumbs up would be awesome. Subscribe for more stuff like this. Don't forget, just over a week and a half left to pre-order the 1 million subscriber heist hoodie. Tag me on Twitter if you do. I hope you're all staying safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Poise. Find me on the mountaintop. Need no calculator.